So, at Ibrox, Rangers are leading. A goal four minutes from half-time from Alan McLaren. Goal attempts few and far between. Seven in total, four of them for Celtic. Each on target twice, and not a booking in sight <laughs> from a lively, shall we say, first half. And what about that for action areas? Possession, 55% to Celtic, who trail by a goal to nil. Rangers against Celtic from Ibrox, first up this afternoon. We're following that with Leeds United against Everton from Elland Road. But Andy, what do you make of the Paul Gascoigne show? He's enjoyed it. Uh, I've enjoyed him. I think he's, he's been there right at the centre of everything, which is since uh, the, the first whistle. And Rangers will be pretty thankful, I think, that Paul Gascoigne's been in the mood that he's been in. He's been at the hub of everything good that they've created. And there hasn't been a lot of good creative football. Uh, both defences have looked pretty solid. Celtic have had an awful lot of possession, as our, as our figures showed, but really haven't looked good enough to break down this three-man central barrier that Rangers have played with all season. They've just stuttered a little bit in front of it. 30 yards from goal, they've seemed to run out of ideas. Now, now it might mean that Tommy Burns will make a change, bring in one of his, his tricky wings, like little Brian McLaughlin. He's got a little trick, might do something special, something different. Mm. They're a little bit predictable now. And Rangers, after 20 minutes, I thought began to grow. And Gascoigne's influence became apparent after that. And it was absolutely no surprise that if Rangers scored, that it would be the result of a Paul Gascoigne either pass or cross. What a free kick, eh? It's so difficult to deal with. I mean, Billy McNeil mentioned that John Hughes might have done better. I don't think he could have done any better as a centre-back. The difficulty for Hughes is the ball's dipping and McLaren's in front of him. So he's always going to be favourite. It's almost like a near-post corner, this delivery, Richard. And all you're hoping for when you take a corner is a little flick. Just the slightest touch is all you want on the ball. And if you look at that, it is only the slightest touch. So it's delivered like a near post corner. Alan McLaren's got a great position. He just helps it on. The goals don't move, that famous old saying, the goals don't move, and Rangers find themselves one up. And when you're looking at the, at the possession, mm -hmm. do they deserve to be one up, Rangers? They've looked the most dangerous side, I think. Although they haven't had as much possession as Celtic, when they have had it, with Gascoigne and with Loudrop in particular, they've looked as if they've got two players who can do it, as I said, do something different do something special. Celtic have been a little bit too predictable. Down the wide, they've lacked a little particularly on the right-hand side, and that's why I think they might make a change, do something different. What I think the goal has done, it's lit up the game, and I think the second half will be a lot different than the first. No bookings. Can no. you believe that? No. I mean, I can in a <laughs> Scottish match, Richard, but I think... It's nice to see. Yeah. I mean, they know up there it's going to be competitive, there's going to be tackles flying in. Now, I, I, you can bet your life, had this game been south of the border, we'd be looking at at least, oh. I think, six or seven bookings in the match. There's been no bookings in the match. Has anyone got any complaints about it? No, I no, certainly haven't. It's been fantastic, hasn't it? And Rangers lead by a goal to nil. Alan McLaren. The difference between the two sides at the moment. Four minutes from half-time. Celtic have to do what? And fast. Well, I've got to pick up the game, and they've got to look at ways of exposing Rangers a bit more. I don't know if the substitution might help them. Craig Moore, they've lost at the right side, and that may upset Rangers a little bit. But Celtic have got to look for someone to create something. John Collins at McStay in particular. Those are the two most creative players, and those are the two they'll be looking at to create something for them second half. More from Ibrox after the break, a game that was being billed as a title decider. Rangers shaded at the moment. Coming later, of course, Leeds against Everton, but it's Ibrox again next. on Sky One. I'm being indicted. At six, the Simpsons are on the run. And there... We're going in circles. ...on the wrong side of town. I didn't plan on getting lost. Big spender. Is Brandon on the winner? I don't like what I see. Beverly Hills 90210. Hold on. At eight, they're off course. Battle station. Voyager. Another time, another place. Alan! For the Highlander at night. Tonight's viewing on Sky One.
figure 11,455 pounds. The Primera Precision. Hamed, Bruno, Collins, Ben, and more. Please rise for the Lords of the Ring to buy on video now. Last year, this man convinced over 30,000 of you to part with your money. A hundred million pounds has already passed through his company's accounts. He promised to help you avoid paying tax. He promised not to take any commission. And with no salesman and low charges, he's done exactly what he promised. He is the chairman of Virgin Direct. To find out how you can invest in one of our PEPs, call 0345 959595 now. Virgin Direct, straight down the line. <laughs> All week long, the real sports fan just can't resist watching Sky Sports. Because tomorrow, Newcastle face West Ham in a game they must win to stay in the title race. And on Wednesday, Liverpool and Leeds meet again in the FA Cup. And because on Thursday, a USBGA Classic tees off in New Orleans. While on Saturday, the Pilkington Cup semi-final pits second division London Irish against Leicester. And because on Sunday, another crucial premiership match sees Man United versus Tottenham. So, just business as usual next week on Sky Sports. Ibrox Stadium, Rangers 1, Celtic 0 at the end of a, a lively 45 minutes. Alan McLaren's goal separating the teams, Andy. And I like, uh, talking about. <laughs> it's McLaughlin, it is, uh, Richard. I thought they might change it. I felt they had to. Um, and it's no surprise that uh, Tommy Burns knows that he needs to take something from this game. And I thought they were a little bit predictable. You know, if there was one thing that maybe they could have been here, they might have been a little bit deep when they were defending the free kick Richard. But once it's been delivered, and it's coming in like that, you can see the problem that Hughes has, because it's dipping in front of him, he's got absolutely no chance, and neither has Gordon Marshall. Probably the only place that Alan McLaren could have scored was where he, he actually put the header. Not too many targets for Gascoigne either, were they? McLaren no, really? and McCoy's behind him, that was it. Rangers have not overcommitted at all in the first half. They've been quite happy to soak up the pressure and say to Celtic, listen, if you want the three points badly enough, come and show us if you can beat us. At the moment, they haven't showed anything to suggest that they can break Rangers down. But I did say they were a little predictable. They needed someone who's got a bit of flair. Little Brian McLaughlin has that flair. Now the thing is, can they get the ball to him? And can he test them? Because at the moment, Rangers are comfortable at the back. And there is Paul Gascoigne. We've thoroughly enjoyed watching for 45 minutes. Terry Venables amongst the big crowd at Ibrox today. I have a gas going for Euro 96. Let's rejoin Billy McNeil and Rob Hawthorne. And the first thing to tell you is that Celtic have made a change at half-time. John Collins, after his first match back following a groin problem, has been taken off. And Brian McLaughlin comes on to take his place, as he did in the two matches that John Collins had previously missed before this. Celtic then, with it all to do, and getting the second half underway Rangers know that if they hang on here and win this match despite all their pre-match protests that this game wouldn't be a title decider there'll be an awful lot of work for Celtic to do to catch them up if they open up a six-point gap so plenty of incentive for Celtic in their reshuffled lineup and this is Boyd came short towards Boyd hoping to get his first touch of the second half he's advanced now towards the edge of the penalty area this is McNamara 
has come off Miller for the throw -in. You know, Rob, I think that uh, Tommy Burns will be making that change to, to be a bit more positive and, and to hope that he could see Ryan McLaughlin run against Gordon Jury, but Rangers have countered that. They've switched Jury to the other side of the field and brought Alec Clarnd across here. Demora hits it against Jury. And it's McNamara with the throw in. McLaughlin has gone across to that side now. No free kick given to throw in. And now the free kick has been given against Celtic. You could see from the moment that this match began how Paul Gascoigne was fired up for it. That competitive aggressiveness of his. Wanting to turn on the right sort of display for his watching England coach Terry Venables. And he's been involved in the crucial moment so far with a free kick. But Alan McLaren headed in to give Rangers their lead. Here's McCoist. Gordon Jury. Miller! Some go well with a bit. It was a real positive run by, by Gordon Jury right at the heart of the Celtic's bench. And, oh, Charlie Miller does so well there to control it and just off target, but uh, certainly a, a real let off for Celtic in many ways. Marshall vastly relieved to see that one from Miller go wide. Jury who set it up. And Laudrup is offside. But in the meantime, of more concern was the challenge in the build-up on Ali McCoist. It's left him needing treatment. Another good break that from Rangers who started the second half very positively with Jury linking in. Well, the, the, the substitution has certainly given them a more positive look. You know, that taking off Craig Moore, who's a more defensive player, bringing on Gordon Jury, they're always going to have that ability to break forward more positively. And certainly they've looked, they've looked eager for it since the start of the second half. Finally getting into it. Hughes. Tommy Boyd. McNamara wants it. Service is provided. This is Tom. Gascoigne is pushing his luck and he's pushed it too far this time. First booking of the match. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit of a rash challenge. He's never going to get connection with the ball, but he certainly made connection with the player and really he's been courting danger and I don't think that the referee had any other course of action to take him to book him. challenge on Tom by Paul Gascoigne that produces the first portion of the game. There's a very fine line, really, isn't there, between competitiveness and aggression. Gascoigne well, just broke the boundary. He's not a natural tackler, is he? And uh, when you do that type of thing, you're always liable to get yourself in trouble. Almost in trouble there through O'Donnell, but the crowd of Rangers players blocking the shot. Point. Top. That's going to still no holding back. Even though he's walking a bit of a tightrope now. 
Rangers have won the throw. Paul Gascoigne. Using his silky skills to defy Tom and Van Hoydonk. Rangers almost under more pressure though until Brand cleared. Strange ball back from McLaren that put John Brown under real pressure. Here's McNamara. McLaughlin going for it. The call with a clearance. This is McKinley. And the post bustling McKinley off the ball. And McKinley's furious because he thought he should have had a corner. I think even the Tosh McKinley would concede there it was good defending by Alan McCoyst and Rangers have worked very well as a team to today you know whenever they've been under pressure there's been no lack of blue jerseys around there to try and sort the danger out that's going foul on him this time by grant here's Laudrup given away to Tom Hoydonk, first on here from O'Donnell, Tom's in the middle, if he can find him. Good work from Alan McLaren. Holds up Celtic for the time being. But they could still be a danger from the corner, particularly with Van Hoydonk waiting at the edge of the six-yard box. It was an awkward one as it went spinning off Brown's head. And Gorham really had to keep his eye on it. Andy Gorham starts the comfort here, but you see it's going to be difficult. It stays away from it. At the end of the day, it takes all the heat out of the situation. But just there was a, a little second or two there, it looked tricky for Rangers. Caught by Petrich. Celtic very busy trying to pull themselves back into the game. McLaughlin weaves away from Gascoigne. And then hits it against Alex Clellans. All credit to Celtic after that scare provided by Charlie Miller. They've uh, come out and look more purposeful. With a throw in now off McCall. And it comes off Lloyd for the throw in. Going up with Grant. Stay trying to play behind the Rangers defence. Petrus, I think, was expecting Gorham to come for that. I think he might well have been the title there, but uh, at the end of the day, they, they, they broke up the situation again. Here's Boyd. Looking for Van Hoydonk. And it was just beyond his reach. It's a nice ball into the middle and Van Hoydon in there again but uh, John Brown just shepherded him away and there was never really any danger after that but a little bit better timing might have caused a problem. The crowd volume levels around Ibrox rise again. Celtic supporters lifted by this good spell of pressure looking to release McLaughlin here and Clellans holds him off. Save the corner, but Celtic have run it back well. Header away by McCall. This is Grant. 
and it's Clallan this time in the way. Rangers defending in depth, only McCoyst and Loudrop forward. And McCoyst turns away from Hughes. Now Clallan is supporting the attack, they've got to stay on side here. McCoyst has to go through on his own. He was pulled to the ground by McNamara. And what does the referee do with Jackie McNamara? It's a yellow card. McCoyst does so well, he holds the ball up, he knows there's not a lot of support. I think he might well have seen that, but then he knows just loud up going offside to go himself. And, you know, Jackie McNamara might just be that little bit fortunate that uh, the referee judged he wasn't the last defender. But uh, great play by McCoyst, and, you know, it's a difficult time for Celtic because they've got to push forward and they're leaving those little one or two little gaps at the back. Gascoigne's already done some damage with one free kick. And this looks to be within his range. It's Gascoigne again. Not so harmful to Celtic this time. And Jackie McNamara may reflect how fortunate he is to stay on the field because McCoyce was certainly looking for the goal-scoring opportunity. He can afford to have a little laugh and a joke about it now, but... He knew that he had to take that situation on board himself because the two players ahead of him were both offside. Here's Van Hoydon. Three Celtic players in the box. Petric had to reach up for the header. And the clearance was by Brown. Celtic are certainly pushing now. But, uh, and it's, there's been one or two little signs that they're starting to threaten that positive uh, back division of Rangers. But... Uh, at the moment, they have worked very hard. McLaren, Petrus and Brown have really worked for the money today. Boy. Tom couldn't get it beyond Gascoigne. Well, the referee had blown for the uh, foul there on Paul McStay. And Celtic may have been looking for the advantage to be played. Yeah, I think they might well have been entitled to look at that advantage, but... You know, the referee, he's handled it, he's taken a lot of the tension out of the game and uh, who can complain? And from next season he'll be able to see if the advantage accrues before deciding whether or not to bring it back for a free kick. It is a Celtic free kick and Paul McStay will choreograph things. Straight into Rangers territory. Powerful header away it was by Petric. And this is Gascoigne. Fury trying to rescue it in vain from Gascoigne's ball. Andreas Top. Grant's gone outside him, McNamara looking for goal. But not too close at all. McNamara has scored one goal this season. In the match against Hibernian. didn't really trouble Gorham with that last effort. Boyd. The Rangers' defensive resilience needs testing from Celtic. And the way the possession's going, they have uh, certainly had enough of the ball to give Rangers a stern examination. The Rangers have the best scoring record and the best defensive record in the Premier League. So it won't be easy by any stretch of the imagination to break through a defence that's conceded just 16 goals in the league this season. Touch from Van Hoydonk. Even without Richard Goff, McLaren is playing so well. I think Celtic have 
for the nuts off in the second half, but they're still playing a lot of their football in front of Rangers defence, and I honestly do think they might have to try and get the ball forward a little bit quicker, because by, by playing so many passes at the back and in midfield, they're allowing the Rangers to get round behind the ball, and Rangers are, are giving them that space in front of them. Here's McKinley. McLaughlin. Teasing his way through. With a big six foot five striker like Van Hoydonk in the Celtic lineup, you'd expect them to be playing it forward long and high, but he likes it play to feet, doesn't he? He wants it played into his feet, and I think they've got to try and do that. Push him as far forward as he can, knock it in his feet, and allow the support to come from midfield areas because. You know, at the moment, as I say, that uh, they're not really disturbing unduly that uh, range of back division. Here's Tom. <laughs> Clearance by McLaren. And Hoydock was expressing confident noises about getting the better of a Rangers defence. Minus Richard Goff, he said he didn't expect to be monitored that closely for the entire 90 minutes. But so far, he hasn't had a real sniff. Ladrup to Gascoigne. And Gascoigne might try and go it alone. Grant. Petrich in the way. This is Hughes. Next day. Space here for Grant. Across from McKinley, Van Hoydonk! First opportunity he's had to attack a cross of that sort. It's one of the, the, the first good crosses that he's had in that box that he can go and attack. It's just the right height for him. I really think that he should be hitting a target with that one because it was a good, good area for him to hit and he had lost his defender. He scored in the three-all draw at Ibrox between the sides earlier in the season. The only occasion on the four previous meetings when Celtic have breached the Rangers' defence. Tom and Collins were also on target for Celtic that day. Given against Lago, taken to McKinley. Topman. It's McKinley's cross, Van Hoydon coming in again. McLaren's header away that time. Here's McNamara, good spell of pressure from Celtic. And closer all the time to providing the sort of service that Van Hoydon, who's clearly the danger man, wants. Well, certainly Tosh McKinley's got himself into good position and he's sent good balls into the middle, coming away from the goalkeeper to allow Van Hoydon to bring in attack. McKinley again. And this time, Tosh McKinley has won the corner. will be a threat like Van Hoydon from the corner. Rangers of the old firm trying to hold firm here against Celtic. And it was Hughes who came in. As it flies over the bar. Celtic will be really disappointed that they haven't turned that into a goal. Well, that, that's right, they have had that possession, but, you know, and while they've brought it that little bit forward, they still haven't unlocked that central that central trio. McLaren, Fettis, Brown have been very good, and really Celtic's got to, to look for some little bit of inspirational play to, to get them a breakthrough. Boy, every time he's been involved, it's been to set off an attack McLaughlin McNamara 
over Van Hoydonk's head and turned away by Petric. The pressure from Celtic is unrelenting, but Rangers are holding on. Tom. McLaughlin. Attempted cross coming off Miller, 